With authority. Welcome to another edition of our With Authority podcast. Larry Beal, Casey Pratt, and our special guest, zooming in from Cal, is Cal, women's basketball player, Mia Mastroff, who um, has just pulled off something pretty significant and pretty special that we'll get to in just a moment. But first, uh, Mia, welcome and congratulations. And I, I'm congratulating you because I realize that between you and I, we have, I think, 218,000 Instagram followers. You and me. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. I think you have 217,000 of them. So a little, a little skewed, a, a lot. I have some catching up to do, but you know. <laughs> Do you have any advice? Um, I say keep posting a little more on the page, just a little more frequently, be consistent with it. You've obviously looked at the absence of recent photos on my page. I might have. Or, or, or not at all, not, a, <laughs> not at all. But all right, I'm, I'll work on it, I will try, I'll do my best. <laughs> I don't know that I get to 200,000, but uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's talk turkey, okay? Let's do that, because Thanksgiving has come and gone. And you took it upon yourself to do something that is really special. And I don't think, let's say, the, the average college freshman would have the idea, the means, or the, the wherewithal to get done. So can you describe uh, you know, your gift? Yeah, I mean, I donated 100 meals to the Alameda Food Bank, um, so 100 turkeys. Um, and I kind of just think being in Berkeley and just every day walking past uh, homeless people in the park and going to class and just seeing everything around me, I've kind of just always in the back of my mind thought about doing something special and then the holidays came around and I just made the decision to make a little donation out of the NIL money I've earned and yeah. Yeah, how much kind of does it matter for you to be able to do something nice like that during the holiday season and use a newfound source of income in the NIL money, which timing was great for you, by the way, you actually get to join Cal and take advantage of all this NIL money. So how special was it just to kind of know that you're helping out in the community like yeah i mean it's definitely pretty special i think just especially being in a community where you're seeing so much going on and berkeley's just so live in everything and every social aspect so i think just being a part of it and kind of taking something on head on and just donating felt really good and especially with the new way of money we're allowed to make and i've been making a good amount of income and i think that it was just a felt like the right thing to do for this holiday season we should back up a little bit and just explain NIL for people that may not be familiar with what is potentially an enormous change in college athletics, uh, name, image, likeness, NIL. You're now allowed to have sponsorship deals, endorsement deals, uh, things like that, that previously um, athletes before you would have been suspended uh, for uh, getting involved with. You know, I mean, this has gone on for years where, you know, teams have been punished, players have been punished, but now it's, uh, you know, it's wide open. So who do you have NIL endorsement deals with at this point? Um, yeah, no, I've definitely been working with a lot of companies and kind of going through the fields with everyone and seeing what I want to do. But um, as of now, there's nothing signed to where I'm doing like a contract deal with, but more just um, receiving gifts and things like that from um, clothing companies and more fashion based. But in the next month or so, I think that I'll be announcing a lot more deals that I have coming up, which are pretty cool. How exciting for that? Because what you're like 18 or 19 years old? 18. Yeah. And what's it like just being involved in the kind of back and forth negotiations. I know your your dad is, has been a, a pretty successful businessman, so he could help you with some of that, but how much of that are you doing on your own? Um, I would say I was doing a pretty good amount on my own before um, it became like a more serious thing to me with social media. So it's definitely pretty fun to navigate and learn. Um, definitely take a little bit of the business side from my dad with everything, and I like to see the numbers and everything with all that kind of stuff, but it's pretty cool and tough to navigate, but I'm going through it and learning as I'm going. Yeah, speaking of family history, um, your grandpa played at Cal. So how amazing is it to end up at Cal? I know that you watched a lot of Cal games growing up. So um, my grandma actually went to Cal. So we have a little connection there, but um, how much did kind of following in that family footstep really helped make your decisions? Yeah, no, I think that that was pretty special to me. And I think my first game on the court, I just felt like some sort of like 
energy from the arena that was pretty cool after my grandfather passed away and that it just was the right place for me to be. And I'm really happy to be here. And I'm just grateful and know that it's where I'm meant to be. When you were at Miramonte High School, did you target Cal in a way or did you have it in the back of, of your mind that this is the school that I am destined to go to? Or was it just like, OK, you know, we'll see how it turns out? I don't think I was I wasn't the kid growing up where I was like, OK, like Cal's where I want to be 100 percent. That's where my grandfather went. But it was more like the coaching staff and everyone who was here just Regardless of if it was Cal, I think just the people who were here made it really special to me and where I wanted to be. When, you know, you look at, at, at the court and you see Pete Newell's name and know that your, your grandfather was, you know, was on those teams, what is that feeling like inside? It's pretty cool. I mean, I'd say before every game and stuff, just like I like to walk out there and like stand on the Pete Newell because it's literally written on the court and just mm -hmm. know that like I'm underneath the same roof that my grandfather played in. And there was a lot of history made in Haas Pavilion. So it's pretty special. You know, Larry mentioned Miramonte High School and Sabrina Unescu went there. I know that she was ahead of you, but um, we've actually had her on this very podcast right before the WNBA draft. She was fantastic to talk to. It was kind of in the throes of the pandemic at the time. But, you know, being able to see up close the success that she's had and the path that she's taken, you know, how much does that kind of open your eyes to the opportunities that are ahead of you? Yeah, I mean, growing up in the same area, Sabrina, I for sure watched a lot of her games and got really close with her since we had the same high school coach for both basketball in high at Miramani and AAU for Cal Stars. So, I mean, it's pretty cool to see someone like her just take everything and do so much with it um, and pretty inspiring. So she's like an older sister to me and I definitely look up to her. Have you gone out on the court and said, well, you know, let's just go. Let's see what happens. I mean, she's, <laughs> she's tremendous. So, you know, yeah, yeah, she's, be careful she's, definitely, you, she's definitely be careful. been at a couple open gyms in Mir at Miramani for sure. But it was when she had a little bit of an injury. So she was kind of just there to get her work back in to see how she felt on the floor. So it was fun. It's fun guarding her always and just laughing and joking around. But it's for sure crazy, crazy person to guard. I was going to say, you have to be careful what you ask for, because you, right. you might get a lot more than you ask for once she starts to turn it on. But it's. Right. I mean, it's so interesting, just, um, you know, the, the path and, and the connections that you have, not only to the school, but also through your high school, where, you know, there aren't that many people that say, oh, yeah, Sabrina, yeah, yeah, we're, we're good friends, we, you know, occasionally we'll, we'll run together and, you know, that type of thing. And, and then to be at Cal on the team as a freshman, and, uh, oh, by the way, Cal has a pretty good team this year pretty, pretty good. We're doing pretty well right now. I'd say we have some pretty tough games coming up, but I'm excited with the group of girls that we have this season. What's it like for you as a freshman? Cause I know, you know, minutes are often going to be limited, but just the overall experience, cause you know, you're talking about getting um, adapted to a whole different life as you, you start classes in a different location uh, you know, obviously all the basketball on top of that, there's, there's a lot going on in your life. Uh, and oh, by the way, 217,000 Instagram followers that want some content. Right. There's a, there's definitely a lot to deal with a lot to balance, but I have great people around me who are for sure helping me with everything and supporting me. My coaches have great support in me, which is super helpful for sure, as well as my teammates. But being a freshman at Cal is just a good experience and I'm so far loving it just love meeting new people and from all over the world honestly it's a great experience so I actually looked while we were talking Larry has 978 Instagram followers I have 1160 you have 217,000 and I don't mean to sound corny when I ask this question but I mean you obviously have a modeling background right like you have an edge on us don't you <laughs> Maybe. I guess I don't. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, maybe. Because <laughs> it helps to know lighting and, and different things when you're posting photos, right? It, def it definitely does. It definitely does for sure. I think I've learned a lot through my modeling events where you kind of figure out your angles and what's the best type of picture to post. But yeah. <laughs> I, awesome. I think that's, that's, that's 
that's my my drawback. That's that's why I can't get the numbers. You have it's terrible the lighting. angles. It's the lighting. Lighting. This lighting. is terrible. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it, for me, it's all about the lighting, and I just won't take the photo and post it unless it's it's perfect. And that's why we're under a thousand followers. I, exactly. That's what I'm going with. Yeah. You you, you understand me finally. Somebody it makes around sense. here. No, it, it Casey, makes total sense. Casey mocks me, but you understand. <laughs> so that I'm, I'm as long as you're you're good with it, I'm good with it too. So. Um, what 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 else do you have in the back of your mind regarding NIL, possible charity, anything like that? Because um, you mentioned you do have more deals on the way. Um, right. I mean, I guess just like advice to any other athletes out there is just take your time with your deals and don't take everything that comes right away. Kind of just narrow through everything and feel how it feels and, and then make your decision. But there's no rush to make any type of decisions just to make money and for doing what you want with your money. I mean, that's up to y'all, but <laughs> yeah. But, but it's gotta be, I mean, the timing for you is perfect because you know there's the stereotype, oh, the broke college kid, obviously your family background, that was never gonna be you, but just to be able to have your own money coming in and that, that you've earned and maybe you've negotiated, that's gotta feel really gratifying, I would think. Yeah, no, it's definitely pretty cool. And I think like, as the female generation of athletes keeps growing, it's pretty cool how everyone's able to just make their own money by using their platforms. And I think it's going to become a bigger thing in the future where athletes and especially women are going to start using their platforms to establish a fan base and make more money, which is pretty cool. See, I think that's really cool. I have two daughters. Larry has two daughters. And to see the way that you now have an opportunity to even the playing field, so to speak, because you know, playing women's college basketball, you're not going to get the same attention that like the Cal football team gets. So how do you feel this evens the playing field for, for you and, and your teammates and people that can now really kind of make their own path? Yeah, I think that now that money comes into play, people are definitely going to start paying more attention to what is was kind of viewed as just something that was for fun, you know, like TikTok or Instagram. But now that people can really focus in on that, I think girls might take over the world with this one because we all just like are constantly making videos, taking selfies and things like that. So it's pretty cool and pretty special. I think, especially for younger generations to look up to girls and see on their little TikToks or social medias that, Oh, wow, I can do this and play a sport that's kind of looked at as more masculine and still be pretty and do modeling and things like that. So I think it's pretty special. Oh, we should mention um, because you're good friends with a Stanford basketball player. I'm not even sure if this is allowed. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, but you want to, uh, you want to explain um, your friendship with, with Cameron Brink? Yeah, I think um, Cameron and I became friends during AU. I believe I was 16. So a couple years ago when I joined, when she joined the Cal stars team and I was there. So we became really close, me as well as Brooke Dimitri and her, and kind of our friendship just blossomed from there. We literally spent every second together while we were playing EYBL and tournaments like that. But it's very funny to have a friendship with someone who's also your rival because there's a lot of jokes going on and definitely competitiveness for sure between us. What happens when Cal plays Stanford this year? A lot. I think we might have to leave that to, to see, but it's going to be a lot of jokes and a lot of seriousness for sure as well. But yeah. I'll leave well, you with this. This yeah. is funny because we have a wall of TVs in our sports department. We watch all the games. So we watch all the Stanford games. And I'm always telling Larry that I think Cameron Brink is awesome and she's amazing. And then we come in contact with you and then Connor Letourneau writes that article and it's like, wait, so me and those Cameron, they know Sabrina, Sabrina knows Curry. And then it's like, God, this is such a small world in, in this basketball community. So how much support are you guys kind of all giving each other? And how crazy is it just to have all these connections all of a sudden? Yeah, it really is. I think the basketball world is a lot smaller than people think. And one person will know someone who knows three other people who knows four other people. So it's a great connection way to just kind of know everyone. I mean, you have Cam who knows Steph pretty well. And then I know Sabrina and then you know, who all of those people know as well. So it's pretty cool to just kind of grow your platform just based on who you become friends with and who you get to know through what sport you love and play. 
Amazing. Now you know us too. It's perfect. Done. Now we know, um, full circle. Yes. Um, I'm gonna work on this lighting um, so that when we do this again, you know, the numbers will be up. I, I feel compelled now that uh, I, I know what my mission is. Better lighting, better lighting. <laughs> better Endless lighting. Yeah. yeah, it's all about the lighting. Yeah. Mia, thank you so much. Best of luck uh, the rest of the way this season. And um, and please, you know, let's stay in touch. So uh, once you make those those new deals, um, we, we put them on TV and get some publicity out of them, okay? For sure. Yep, thanks for asking me to join and safe holiday season to everyone out there. Absolutely. Thanks so much. With authority.